we have a three-headed monster, right? We, we have a bunch of people that want vitamin D, but three real ways to get it. Through the sunlight, through our food, or everyone's favorite, through supplementation. There are drawbacks to each and pros to each, but we need to understand which one might be best for long-term vitamin D levels, really getting our vitamin D levels where we want them. In order to understand this, we have to look at the synthesis and metabolism of vitamin D within the body, because it's not like we're just ingesting vitamin D in its magical bioavailable form. It still goes through a process in the body. So let's start with how it's synthesized from the sun. So when you go out in the sun, you absorb UVB light, okay? These UVB lights then bind to, uh, when it absorbs, it binds to DNA, it binds to RNA, and it binds to different proteins. Then there is something called 7-dehydrocholesterol. Okay, this is also known as pro-vitamin D. This basically sits between the triglyceride, fatty acid, hydrocarbon tails. So it's kind of like stored somewhat in our fat. Okay, well, what happens is this pro-vitamin D then acts upon the UVB light and it ultimately creates what's called pre-vitamin D. So it's kind of complicated. It goes from pro-vitamin D into what is called pre-vitamin D. Now these pre-vitamin D molecules then get acted upon by isomers that make them more stable. So what that means is these pre-vitamin Ds are now thermodynamically stable, which means that they can leave a cell and go into the capillary beds. They can now essentially go into the bloodstream. And once they're ready to go here, then they circulate to the liver. But we're gonna pause right there because they bind to something called a vitamin D binding protein. And I wanna pause here because now I wanna talk about when we ingest vitamin D because they kinda of come together at this point, okay? So now we know the process when we absorb it from the sun. But when we ingest vitamin D, it's a very similar process except we have some nuancey stuff some would say that maybe we don't absorb all the vitamin D from our food because it all depends on the biome, it all depends on absorption, it all depends on cliomicrons, all this kind of stuff, which is absolutely true. But once it has become its normal vitamin D form that's bound to vitamin D binding protein, the fates converge. Sunlight, food, supplement, they all kind of come together at this point. So at this point, they bind to vitamin D binding protein, which carries them to the liver. Now in the liver, cytochrome P450A converts this vitamin D into what is called 25-hydroxy vitamin D. This is the primary circulatory form. So this is what you are measuring generally, is what the liver has converted, okay? So at this point, it doesn't matter if you got your vitamin D from a mushroom, if you got it from fish, or if you got it from the sun. At this point, it's all the same, okay? So once it's in this circulatory form of 25-hydroxy vitamin D, then it gets acted upon by an enzyme in the kidneys when it's ready to be called to action. Now it gets converted into 25-dehydroxy vitamin D, which is more its called to arms version. And again, it doesn't matter where you got it at this point. This is its, you know, massive amounts of distillation enzymatic reactions have created this, right? So then we have to ask the question, well, what's the best way to get it? Well, with food, I love getting it from food because you get supporting nutrients. You get supporting things like vitamin A along with it, like if you eat liver or if you eat sardines or if you eat cod liver oil, things like that that don't sound super exciting, but I guess they are if you do the right things with them. But then you're getting supporting vitamins that actually might help vitamin D do its job. Because there's one thing to have vitamin D levels elevated it's another thing to have vitamin D along with cofactors and along with other supporting nutrients for it to actually do its job because it does however hundred different things in the body that we are only aware of now, right? So the problem we face with vitamin D from food is you typically have to eat a large amount of it. So then we run into this issue. Okay, well I have to eat a ton of egg yolks or I have to eat a ton of sardines. Well, you don't want to be getting all your vitamin D from food. I mean, unless you're in a specific situation, you know, you really have no need to get it all from food, but it makes sense to get it in different sources, right? Sunlight, food, and if you can't get it from there, then get it from supplementation. I usually recommend try to get as much vitamin D rich food as you possibly can because getting the sunlight it really doesn't take much. It only takes like 10 or 15 minutes of sunlight, but it also it only takes 10 or 15 minutes of not going in the sun to lower your levels of vitamin D for that day. So if you keep your levels stable by consistently having food in the equation that is rich in vitamin D, then that's really good too. I put a link down below for Thrive Market, their today's video sponsor. And the reason I mention them is because, first of all, super convenient way to get groceries delivered to your doorstep, 
but they have a lot of really vitamin D rich foods. So they have things like sardines, they have mackerel. I really like Wild Planet, which has really good options for vitamin D rich fish. Again, like the mackerel, like the sardines, all kinds of stuff. So I put that link down below. You don't have to just get canned fish. There's a bunch of other things. So it basically makes it so that you can get your groceries delivered to your doorstep, but there is a link down below that'll save you 25% off your whole first grocery order. Plus you get a free gift along with it. So stock up, go do your whole grocery shopping and save 25% off your whole grocery order. Then it gets delivered to your doorstep in a couple of days and you are off to the races, it's that easy. So that link is down below, but you've gotta use that link to save the 25% off. Now, just to get this out of the way, vitamin D2 that you might get from like mushrooms and things like that, still an absolutely viable source of vitamin D. However, it does not seem to bind to the vitamin D binding protein as well as colocalciferol does from the sun or from like animal product like egg yolks, like fish, like meat, things like that. There's a study that was published in the Journal of Endocrinology Metabolism that gave subjects 50,000 IUs of vitamin D3 or 50,000 IUs of vitamin D2. And they found that there was one third the absorption of the vitamin D2 compared to the vitamin D3. And that's again, just because of the affinity for the vitamin D receptor or the vitamin D binding protein, excuse me, with the vitamin D3 versus D2. Okay, now we have to talk supplement though. Okay, we know that getting it from food is good. We know that getting it from sun is good, but then there is an application for getting it through supplement form, which we all seem to like because it's the easiest to get the levels up. There's a study that was published in Critical Reviews in Food Science and Nutrition. It was a meta-analysis that looked at seven different studies. Okay, now in terms of the dosing for vitamin D, vitamin D synthetic dosing ranged from 400 IUs up to 5,000 IUs. Compared to the sunlight group, we didn't really know how long. So that's the hard part. We didn't have the exquisite data to see how long they were out in the sun. But we do know that they were exposed to UVB light, in some cases, artificial UVB light. Anyhow, what they found with this was that the supplement group ended up having significantly higher levels of vitamin D compared to the sunlight group. Okay, so right here you say, oh cool, is Thomas gonna tell me a supplement? Or, oh cool, I guess I should just take a supplement. No, okay, I will tell you my own biased opinion, I'm not a fan of synthetic vitamin D. Why? Because it's synthetic. I see a problem there. It might raise our vitamin D levels and it might have a practical use case just like Modern medicine has a practical use case, but it doesn't mean that we use it every day. Just like antibiotics have a practical use case, we don't use them every day, right? Synthetic vitamin D might need to be used as an intervention to get us over a hump, but getting it from sun and food just makes more sense to me, right? I hope it does to you too. But anyway, this study continues on. The researchers continue to say that for people that were in the sun longer, if they had more sun exposure, it closed the gap a lot more. There was less of a significant difference between vitamin D supplementation and people that actually spent a long time in the sun. Now we don't know what a long time is, but what's interesting is that maybe in the summertime when you're out in the sun a lot, you don't need the vitamin D supplementation. So who does need a vitamin D supplement? Let's touch on this really quick because I do think there are people that need it. For one, if you're obese, okay, because vitamin D gets sequestered into your fat cells. So if you're overweight and you have a lot of fat on you, even if your vitamin D levels are high, it's trapped in your fat. So by taking in vitamin D in a supplement form, you get yourself over the hump until you lose weight. So your vitamin D is no longer sequestered there. Another situation would be certain religions that cover their skin all the time with clothing, right? It's just hard to get sunlight vitamin D and it's hard to get it from food at that certain level, right? So that makes sense. Darker skinned people, Okay, there's also evidence that maybe darker skinned people face depression more because they have less vitamin D actually hitting their body because more melanin acts as a filter. So if you have dark skin, you might wanna supplement a little bit just to kind of get yourself over a certain hump until you can start figuring out the proper numbers for yourself. And additionally, if you live in a darker place or a place where, you know, like Alaska, where half the year it's really dark, something like that, right? But we need a tiebreaker here because right now it looks like, okay, supplemental works, Vitamin D from the sun works. Vitamin D from food is great, but you need quite a bit of it. Okay, look again, I think in order of hierarchy, sunlight, food, supplemental. But let's look at sustainability. How long does a vitamin D from a different source last in the body? This is a different world. 
There's a study that was published in the Journal of Clinical Investigation that took a look at the efficiency of vitamin D in terms of a vitamin D binding protein. They found 100% of the vitamin D that came from the sunlight would bind to a vitamin D binding protein. 100%, it all bound to the vitamin D binding protein. Compare that to the oral form, whether it's food, supplement taken orally, what would happen is it would have to go through a phase of digestion. It would go into what's called a cliomicron, and this cliomicron would then take it into the lymphatic system. Then the lymphatic system would drop it off the subclavian vein, okay, at which point 60% of the vitamin D would bind to vitamin D binding protein, and 40% would bind to a lipoprotein and just be gone, excreted. So 60% would bind when orally ingested to the vitamin D binding protein compared to 100% from sunlight. So that's interesting right then and there, but then it continues and we see some really interesting stuff. 25 hydroxy vitamin D from the sun lasted two to three times longer in the body than orally ingested. Whoa, what's happening here? Well, part of the situation could simply be the vitamin D binding protein. Okay, that definitely could be a big part of it. But the other part is that it takes eight hours for pre-vitamin D to do the whole conversion work on vitamin D from the sun. So that acts as sort of like a sustained drip. So it's different. It's almost like getting it from the sun gives you a sustained release that takes a while. So getting a lot of sunlight one day can actually have a trickle effect for two, three, four, five, six days, maybe weeks after that depending on how long it takes to completely diminish. Whereas getting a, like literally like an injection of vitamin D or an oral infusion of vitamin D, or possibly even eating it, you're gonna have high increases and then it's gonna drop. High increases with lower efficiency. Whereas sunlight, you're gonna get high efficiency with sustained release. So although the acute amount and the acute increase might be the most with supplement form, it seems like from a sustainability standpoint, being able to last for a longer period of time, getting it from the sun is the best. And it does kind of make sense, right? Because from a biological or even evolutionary sense, just naturally, it's colder and darker in the winter. So maybe we get sunlight through the summer and the fall that's allowing us to absorb more vitamin D and have a trickle effect that carries us over a little bit through the winter. It just makes sense to pay attention to natural rhythms. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.